And I have one testimony to share about um, the healing of an adrenal fatigue. We were in Salinas last week, and there's this beautiful young lady that uh, has quit her job secondary to extreme fatigue. Um, she told me that at one point she was just trying to exercise and she collapsed. When I interviewed her further, I learned that she's been working all this time because her husband was struggling with and is struggling is with um, chronic illness. And so her husband couldn't work. And so because of fatigue for her, she actually quit her work. And then um, she was given like one week. If she couldn't go back to work this week, then um, she's going to lose her job. She went to our healing clinic. I prayed for her, encouraged her. And trust me, she is normal. I mean, she was convinced or made to believe by her doctor that she's you know, she has anxiety, she has depression, she has um, severe um, anemia, she has had several transfusion of iron. But I told her that, you know, I all those facts are true, but um, also her thinking was negative, she was discouraged, she was struggling with extreme panic attack and anxiety and depression. And I would say she is a typical case of adrenal exhaustion. She experienced chronic stress for more than 10 years. The adrenal gland has secreted elevated levels of cortisol. And uh, through prayer, though, she called me the other night. She said that um, her manager called her and interviewed her. And they realized or they just determined that she's fit to go back to work. So we are both celebrating that this is what God does. That once we change our thinking, everything else follow. Also, our, our physiology follows because now our mind is in following the mind of Christ, we call it. Remember in Romans 12, to, to not conform to the patterns of this world, but be renewed or be transformed um, in your mind, you know, so that you will know what is good, perfect, holy, the acceptable will of the Lord is. Okay, so now I will just explain further that chronic stress is not good. I'm giving you secrets from Paul that if we have a positive perception about stress, it's almost like, you know, how we surf and we're waiting for the biggest wave and we'll ride away. That's how we can um, face our stress. If we see stress as, a, as an opportunity to grow, as stress as a challenge to pursue our dreams, our calling, our career, as an opportunity for our marriage to grow, we are in for a trip if we invite Jesus into our stress. Look at how stress affects our thyroid function if we succumb to it. Thyroid hormone and cortisol, they function together. For in order for us to function, we need to have a normal balance of thyroid. In order to have a normal um, thyroid function, we have to have a normal balance of cortisol. That's how it works. Now, if we are not secreting enough cortisol from our adrenal gland, secondary to adrenal exhaustion because of extreme um, stress, then our thyroid function is not working that well. So you have the so-called hypothyroidism. On the other hand, if you experience stress for 20 years, 30 years, you're not managing it well, then extreme cortisol level in your blood could also affect your thyroid hormone by the so-called making it resistance. Meaning to say that your thyroid gland, it is a butterfly shape, um, structure here at the base of your neck that produces two types of thyroid hormone, the T4 or thyroxine or the T3 or the trido iodothyroidine. They're very important hormone. They help in the development of our brain. You know, um, it improves our memory. It gives us strength. It is needed for the metabolism of our cells. So thyroid hormone is very important. That's why we don't want to mess up the thyroid function by not managing our stress well. If you have a lot of stress, you have a lot of cortisol in your blood, and what happens is it makes your thyroid function resistant. Meaning to say that Hey, I have a lot of thyroid hormone. It's just that my receptors in the periphery, you know, are not responding to it. So what's the use of increased cortisol when the cells are not using it? It's the same principle in diabetes type 2. In diabetes type 2, it's not that you don't have insulin. In fact, you have a lot of it. Your pancreas is secreting insulin, but they get stuck there at the gate. They cannot even enter the cell. Cortisol does this to like the rest of the hormone like estrogen and progesterone. So can you imagine all these hormones, they are available, but that your 
cells cannot use them. So you have low estrogen function, low progesterone function. So no wonder you are not perimenopause yet and then you're experiencing this premature hot flushes. I have ladies like that. You are experiencing early onset of bone loss because of the increase in, in cortisol. So there is a, a relationship. So we have to really uh, manage our stress by inviting the Lord into our life. You know how the Lord says in Matthew, like, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden and surrender your yoke upon me. That's what the Lord is saying because the Lord is saying, my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you can learn from me. And even those who are struggling with anxiety, do not fear. That's what the Lord said. Do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you by my righteous right hand. It's the same God who said, do not fear. You know, he said that I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a power and love and sound mind. The same God has said that perfect love casts out fear. And sometimes the reason why we experience fear because we haven't realized how perfect the love and grace of the Lord is. There is hope. And thank God that, you know, we can do exercise, we can do all these herbs that Dr. Susan will discuss if we want to manage our stress. But I would say for me personally, prayer, meditation, fasting. Fasting is so vital in renewing ourselves. It prunes all the unhealthy neurons in our brain. That's why we can think well in the morning. No more brain fog, no more extreme traffic and destruction in our brain because the Lord rewards us with Synaptic pruning or apoptosis, you know, the cutting off of defective neurons in our brain. We have over 100 billion neurons, but if 50 billion of them are not functioning, the Lord will prune that if we, we pray, if we fast, if we worship Him. Same thing with, with sleep and rest. Every time we do that, our um, bone marrow is being recycled. We produce new white blood cells, natural killer cells, red blood cells, and so that um, our capacity to attack cancer cells, our immune system is renewed. So we always tie this to our medical knowledge and the spiritual principle, the Word of God. When the Lord tells us something in the Bible, He knows what why he was saying that because it's always connected to our anatomy and physiology so i hope this helps you guys to manage your stress well because of potential diseases like cancer diabetes osteoporosis hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism because everything is interrelated no wonder the verse that says do not fear was mentioned over 300 times in the bible I would say because the Lord did it intentionally so that we have one verse per day to meditate on about not um, being fear. So I love you guys. Thank you for listening.